My name is Dave Morrow. Nine months of each year, I live out of my vehicle. I travel the wilderness by foot on an endless backpacking and landscape photography trip. I want to teach and share the photography and outdoor skills that I use on these trips. I don't want to spend hours editing video or sitting in front of a computer, so I made some rules. First, everything shot on GoPro. This was the best way I found to record quickly on a consistent basis. Second, I can only spend 20 minutes editing each video. So thanks for watching, and welcome to the Landscape Photography Journals. So basically when I go out to an area, I've scouted it a lot using topographic maps first. I've looked at it on Google Earth, try to get the best idea of the area, then I check the weather before I go. And then I just basically take my phone, which has full scale 24K topographic maps of the whole area that I'll be in, just download it there. And it also provides navigation. Then I also take a hard copy map, top of map of the area and a compass. So I'll have a few spots that I wanna hit a few plans for hiking and like the destinations that I want to get. So I'll normally plan four nights of the trip and then I'll take five to eight nights of food on average. Sometimes the trips are longer, like 10 or 12, but just on average. So I'll kind of have four nights that I kind of know where I want to be specifically within a landscape, putting in so and so many miles per day. And then I'll have four days that I can just go off the top of my head and plan and either sidetrack my trip or do like a base camp and go to different spots within an area. So it's always nice to have eight days of food and then I'm never worried about having to go back in. I can just come out here and shoot and get a lot of miles in and create cool stuff. It's really good light on this wall right here. It's about perfect. Looking for some compositions along here. Goes way up. This is a pretty narrow canyon. It's very lush. I think there's a few springs up that way. And there's a bunch of frogs, crickets up there. It's tempted to grab a camp spot here, but I think I'm gonna move down a little bit further. I really wanna do some shooting in here though. This doesn't really have much light. It's a little bit of a blue color to it back that way. But yeah, this just looks awesome jungle in the desert. So I've been standing here and sitting around waiting for like a half an hour now. As these clouds move through in the background, some of the light starting to reflect into these canyon walls. I was trying to get a close crop, something like right in here with a vertical composition. So there's the composition. You can see it's kind of closed in right there. So I always find these canyons really hard to shoot. It takes a while to get used to the kind of compositions that will or will not work. The thing that I always find when coming into landscapes like this is that when you're looking at it with your eyes, it's so mind blowing. You're like, whoa. So when you try to narrow the whole experience down into a single composition, it can be very hard because there's so much going on. But I'm gonna give it a try here, see what I can come up with. And I've been taking a lot of these shots. So hopefully out of many I'll get a few that work. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to focus about a little less than a half of the scene, so right about in here. And I'm only going to need a single exposure for this one. So I'll put the single point spot focus right there. Zoom in at 100 and I'm going to make sure it's on this edge so my autofocus will easily grab it when zoomed at 100%. Autofocus looks pretty good, but while dialing the focal ring, I'll watch the back of the screen, making sure that focus is perfect. So that looks all right now. I'm good with that. So the next thing I'll do here is go with an f-stop of f11. Looks good. So when I'm selecting these, I basically need a depth of field that covers something that's in the immediate foreground and the distant background, still providing me with a sharp image. So I could go with f16 but F16 has a longer depth of field, but also reduces the image sharpness due to lens diffraction. So I have an F-stop and depth of field written guide, and it goes through all my techniques for the correct F-stop settings, no matter what landscape scene you're shooting. And there's also a free PDF for that whole guide. So you can download it on your phone, you can take it out here shooting with you, and then you can kind of follow my step-by-step -step process for selecting F-stop, 
as well as all the other settings to go along with it. So I'll link that above somewhere and down below in the video notes. So I'll go with F11 here. Nice depth of field, sharp foreground, all the way background to those canyon walls, which are way back there. I'm going to go with ISO 64 here. And the last thing I need to do is dial in my exposure using histogram. So I'll just pull the RGB histogram up there. I'm going to push it all the way to the right using exposure compensation. So it'll just get brighter, brighter, and brighter as I go higher and higher with exposure compensation. So I'm going to push it all the way to the edge first. But since I'm shooting red, and red is a bright color which blows out quicker than the average in the RGB histogram many times, I'll go full blown all the way to the right with my exposure and then I'll back off a single stop. Now backing off an exposure compensation that single stop making the image darker will ensure that I don't blow out red in the final shot. So, so after pushing the histogram all the way to the right or white I will darken the image using exposure compensation by one stop. So by doing that I ensure that I control the color red which can also be deceiving on the RGB histogram. because Sometimes the RGB histogram will look perfect because it's the average of red, green, and blue, but one of the specific channels, such as red, green, or blue, by themselves will be blown out. So I know when I'm shooting bright red canyon walls, yellow, red at sunset, and leaves or grass or trees or anything with bright green and direct sunlight, those are colors that will blow out before the RGB histogram blows out. So that's the technique I use to avoid blowing out. So that looks good. Aperture priority mode kicks out a 1.3 second shutter speed. I'll take it for the first shot so I can just hit the shutter button there. The sunlight's kind of fading in and out, so it'll be really nice, good color, reflective light off those top canyons for a little bit, and then it'll stop. So I kind of have to select when I'm firing the shots off. That one turned out really nicely. I'll check the focal point first. Then I'll check the closest point in my composition next, which is just the bottom of the composition in this case. And by checking that very bottom, I can ensure that's sharp. Next thing I'll do is check the furthest away point in the composition. So that is that canyon wall way back there. So I'll zoom in and make sure that distant object is sharp. So if the furthest away subject in the scene and the closest subject in the scene are both in focus, that means that f-stop value covered the entire depth of field for this image. Next thing I can do is pull up my histograms. Now you can see you have to look at you have to think about this sideways unless I get nice and pop a graphic on the screen. You can see that the RGB is pushed almost all the way to the right, almost to white. The red, on the other hand, is pushed all the way to the right. So if I hadn't stopped down that one stop in my exposure process, red would have been blown out. Green and blue look fine for this scene. So by shooting canyons a lot and shooting in these landscapes a lot, I kind of know the techniques or times when I need to back off an exposure, even if my RGB histogram looks good. So that's kind of my step-by-step -step process for shooting this specific kind of scene. So I just got to where I'm going to camp for the night. And normally the places I go, you don't have to actually schedule like a camp spot. I always go to just national wilderness areas instead of parks. I go to parks once in a while. Some don't have pre-planned camp spots, and that's fine. But if I actually have to plan where I'm going to camp each night, it's kind of a turn off. I would rather get up in the morning at my campsite, go out and shoot sunrise, and then from shooting sunrise, I'll come back to my tent, and then I'll just drink coffee and read and lay around for like two hours. And then after I do that, I'll hit the trail like mid-morning, 10 a.m., 11 a.m., and then I'll just hike until pretty much sunset. When it gets to be like a half an hour from sunset, I will start looking for the camp spot for the night. Kind of just repeat that process. But I like the factor that I can kind of shoot sunrise in the morning, come back and relax, which I enjoy doing. And then I can go out and kind of push it hard all day and then still be out and moving around on the trail when the light's getting good in the canyons or the mountains or whatever else. That's why I like finding a campsite either like a half an hour before sunset or even sometimes I'll hike a bit after sunset with a headlamp, find a good spot and kind of just repeat the process. But the key, what I was looking for in here is I wanted to find a spot that I could put my tent down probably right over in here that will be blocked from the east in the morning. 
So I want my tent to have complete shade until like, I don't know, 10 or 11 a.m. And by doing that, I don't have to hit the trail until like mid-morning and I can get that early sunrise shoot in while I still have my camp set up, which is quite nice. So normally I'll just walk around a specific area where I want to set up the tent and just make sure that it will be shaded in a specific area until mid-morning. And I just pull out my compass and then I put it on east. And then I can pretty much tell which direction is east, where the sun will be coming up. And I'll probably put my tent right here because it'll get blocked by this canyon wall and all these really dense trees. It's kind of like my daily schedule module on trips. I'm always shooting different things and going to different places and stuff like that. But when I'm going throughout the day, I kind of have the same schedule or setup that I block those chunks of time into. Then I don't really have to think about what I'm going to be doing and kind of come out here and just put in miles and take pictures, which is what I really want to spend my time on. So that's why I even have a schedule when I'm out here, or kind of a framework to follow at least to kind of help me get through the day and do what I want to do on a consistent basis. Because otherwise, if I don't have like a framework to go off of, I'll just be lazy or I won't have a direction of what I want to produce or create that day. And then it'll normally turn out like shit. So it helps me to do that. Some people think that is putting like too much lockdown on it and having too much schedule, but I enjoy it like that. It helps me get creative work done that I don't have to have a schedule for. So basically if I schedule creative work, then I'll do it consistently. And by doing consistently, I'll get better at it. Um, that's the only way I know of getting better at something over time constantly is to just be persistent and do it every day. So that's why I have a schedule even when I'm out here. I figure it gives me the best chance of getting better on a consistent basis.